I want to give you all a little bit of a preview of what's to come. So, uh, you know, we're learning the syntax of the language, how to work with the language, and then we're going to start to use it. I guess when you learn a language, you have to learn the syntax, and you got to learn the library, and then you have to learn the design patterns or something like that. And uh, here is, uh, anyhow, so here's some stuff that we'll be able to use from the library. So we're learning the syntax right now. Pretty soon we'll be going to the library and we'll learn how to use templates. So templates, and I just kind of want to show you like, hey, this is going to be cool, building web pages. So when we get here, we start to be able to actually do that stuff. And that's what this class is all about, creating data-driven web pages. And eventually we'll connect that to App Engine, hopefully. We'll see how quickly we go. But uh, templates, a template is basically like a form letter. So it's a general template that gets filled in with data. And so you have, you know, your form letter, but when you create the letter, you say, you know, hi, and then insert first name here, you know, and then, and then you have a paragraph, and then you might say, you know, we notice that your house at insert address here, and then it goes through a database of records, and for each record in the database, it says, hi, Bob, hi, Jan, hi, Stephanie, hi, Stacy, right, and it tailors the template letter to each customer based upon their data. Right, and inserts the fields. So that's the idea behind templates. And there's a package that allows us to do templates. And uh, when we do templates, they're going to look something like this, right? And so, like on line 10, we're saying uh, parse a file. So we have a, a template file, temple.gohtml. And you could call that anything you want, give it any file extension you want, no file extension. You're saying go open up this chunk of data. And um, and then that's, this is the temple go HTML right here. And so right here, there's nothing, no dynamic quality to it. We're not inserting any data. But it's just showing how we could like read a file with this parse file. So we read that file, and it puts it into this variable template, and it also returns an error at the same time when we do that. And then we execute, right? So we execute that temple. There's temple, there's temple. We execute that template, and it's, it writes it to standard out. So it takes a writer right here. And so we're going to use OS standard out, so that's just going to be the command line. And we're not passing in any data. So if we were passing in data, we pass it in there. So when we write that out, it writes it out to the command line and you know, basically read a file and then wrote it out to the command line. But then we could do things like uh, here, like I pass in the just you know a literal value, and so it passes that through, same deal. So the literal value is 5. Well, I'm starting to use some of this computer lingo. We, I'm almost ready to go to college. I think I finally reached the level of maturity where I'm ready to go to college. And I, I think I'll either drop out and become a surfer or study computer science, one extreme or the other. And then here we're passing in a dot and data, right? So here's the data being passed in. So we're executing and we're saying to, to you know, this writer, standard out, and we're passing in the data 10. And uh, so it takes that and wherever you, wherever this dot is, Right, that's where it's going to put the data. So you can think of that dot kind of like the dot in Unix. In Unix, when you're working at the command line, the dot is the current folder or whatever. And this dot here is uh, speaking to um, the current piece of data, right? And so sometimes you'll see when we'll see, you'll see that when you work templates, you'll see some interesting structures like this, where it's range dot up here. So we're going to loop over the current structure of data, which happens to be a series of records like a slice. Here it's a slice of ints. We're going to loop over it. And so each time we loop over it, the current piece of data is what we're going to put in between li. Right? So we're looping over, over this slice of ints, which is a list of integers. And, and then each time we go over the loop, the current piece of data becomes the new dot. So that's how you read that. Does that make sense? Like this first dot re refers to the list, and now we're looping over it. And this dot refers to each item in the list, you know? And so, so when we loop over that, we get, you know, uh, 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 what is this? An unordered list of uh, just integers, one, two, three, four, five, All right? So that's, that's kind of where we're headed. You know, you could pass in an expression here, whoa, using another programming word, five times five, <laughs> and uh, you get 25, right? So pretty cool stuff. And then, you know, basically, you know, we're just doing that to standard out. But then we have to sort of figure out, okay, well then let's actually do that to an HTML file. Yeah, question. How, is it always a period? Like where that's where you pass in the data? Yeah, that's the that's the syntax that's used with Go templates. Yeah, just a period. Because it's very much rooted in Unix. And I think that's where that comes from. But typically you'd be a little more selective in the 
criteria are using to say pull out this, like your form letter example, right? So pull out based on certain criteria. You would just drop. You have a little more logic there. So you yeah, okay? So so I I think I've, I've misanswered, right? So here we're passing in a struct, and a struct is a just a structure for holding data. And so we're going to collect a bunch of data into a structure. And basically, a structure is just like you know a bunch of fields, right? So I have a title field, I have a body field, and so here's a page struct. Every page has a title and a body, right? And uh, and so down here, I initialize my struct, and uh, and I'm just thinking if I use the right word there. So you know, it's a, this is a uh, what would that be? A struct literal or an anonymous struct? I don't quite have the terminology for that because there's not like really a, a name or just I think it's just a struct literal, right? It's just a value. And so uh, here uh, I give it title. I don't have to fill out each of them. So body becomes zero value, which is just empty quotes, right? Since I didn't give it anything. But then over here in the code, I could say, hey, give me dot title. So I'm actually referring to that field because it's a struct. And then because it's a struct, this, this is the struct. And because it's a struct, I could reference fields in the struct with dot field name, right? And so that becomes a little bit more useful. Then I might end up having a slice of structs, right? Where I have a struct that is like people, and then I have a slice with like all of my friends in it, and I could loop over that slice, and each time I loop over it, I could pull out each of my friends posts. Ooh, Facebook. <laughs> kind of cool. So that's where we're headed. And I just, you know, I know we're kind of in the weeds a little bit with syntax right now, you know, but uh, and it's not that, that complex from what we're doing now. It's, it isn't any more complex. It's just a matter of getting the tools that we'll use when we get there. So laying a pretty strong foundation with learning the language. I'm maybe being a little bit too thorough, but that's only because I didn't have time to know it better. I didn't have time to write a shorter letter. <laughs> you know that famous quote? Sorry I wrote yeah. such a long letter. I didn't have time to write a short one. So, somebody fam famous said that. Uh, sorry, I wrote such a long letter. Uh, I don't not have time to write you a short letter, so I wrote you a long one. Sorry to have wearied you so long a letter, but I don't have time to write you a short one. <laughs> Who said it? Blaise Pascal. Pretty cool. I have no idea who Blaise Pascal is. So we were talking about uh, conversion and assertion. So conversion is like a byte to a string or a float 64 to an int. And it looks like this, you know, here taking a string or turning it to a slice of bytes, just converting it to a different type and goes statically typed. And, uh, and that means that, um, uh, I was just thinking maybe I should stop the video and start a, a new one. So I think I'll do that. Just keep them short.